All righty, guys. How's it going today? This is the 503 for the Fans podcast. This is Chase. I'm Noah. And, man, it's been a bumps and bruises to get to, get to you guys. <laughs> you guys won't even understand it. Um, I'm just glad I'm here talking to my man, Chase. And we're going to be talking about some Portland Trailblazers. And, we're, yeah, we're just going to dive in. Um, I think we're, we're, just, we're going to start with preseason reactions. Uh, Portland goes up. They, I think they went one and three. Um, they went 0 and 3 against NBA competition, um, which is, you know, it, it, it's preseason. I, I'm not going to judge too much on that. Portland went, what, 0 and 4 last year. they not saying we're going to get out to some 10 and 4 three start. start yeah. 10 and 3 start. But um, I think Portland is, I, I, they're, they're going to struggle. But my initial reactions from preseason is what does Chauncey look like for this team? Is he going to develop as a coach? Um, I, I, I've been telling Chase when we kind of just talking back and forth, but I think the thing with Chauncey for me is I think it's really important for Chauncey to really connect with these players, especially guys like Aiton, um, who are, you know, on the lower, like, accepting side of, like, hard mentality and just, you know, coaches being hard on them. Uh, not necessarily that DeAndre is like that, but I do worry w- about DeAndre a little bit. And I think his preseason, like, videos talking about the phoenix um we're a little concerning i'm not going to buy too much into that i think it was just like you know he just hates phoenix so much and (laughs) you know (laughs) and he he is a very charismatic dude and so i think the whole video thing with me caused it was a little was a little flag but you know i I do think him and chauncey will be will be okay and i I am really looking forward to Aiden. and i think the biggest thing based off his preseason that Phoenix game against Nurkic, I think you could just, I think you could just really tell like Phoenix has a real like hard spot on him. He is bad blow with him. He and definitely is bad blow with him. Yeah, and I think the whole thing with him is like he needs to play through that type of stuff. Nurkic was that way, but you know, Nurk when he got here, he was a it was more like a a big fu to Denver. And so I think you know Portland fans are kind of expecting that to happen. Like, yo, why are you not just busting Phoenix's? You know, and it's just like I I, I was a little disappointed in that performance. I think you do see that side of Aiton where it's like, hey, he does disappear, and he yeah. gets in those moments where it's like, you know, he's kind of like a Jeremy Grant of a five. And you know, I do hope he's a better rebounder, but like he he has this, those instances where it's like, bro, you're like the base man on the court. Go get go get a rebound. He just like, needs – oh, my God. He just needs to be meaner. I know it sounds very simple, but he's just so soft about the ways he's going to the rim sometimes. And it's it's not just what we saw in that preseason. It's been the whole whole career. His whole yeah. career, he's been too soft around the rim. He's 7-1. He's a behemoth of a man. He needs to have some force going to the rim. Like I've had so many instances where I've seen this guy – either not go up strong and settle for like a, a hook shot that's off balance or he'll he'll settle for a mid-range or he just won't be powerful in his finishes and i think if he has that sense of urgency to just be mean on the court man it would be a big difference in his game i know it sounds very simple but it, it, it's, it seems to me that he's just not aggressive and forceful like i just want him to be angry you know (laughs) he needs to be he needs to be the dominating man (laughs) yes live live by what you're telling us every day right (laughs) seriously like you know like you know nurk has those games though like you know that that was like typical nurk where like you know he has that one game and it's just like dude is this dude a top five center in the nba like (laughs) yeah i actually sorry sorry to cut you off but i was gonna say i actually went to his best career game ever which was you went on, to the speed, you went to the sack the, the game? sack game. I was there at that sack game, and I thought Dude. we had the next the best center in the league. The next Jokic. Yeah, I thought Jokic. I thought we got the next Jokic, <laughs> but he he wasn't shooting. But he looked like a playmaking wizard. He had like five steals, five blocks, or something like that. Uh, 2019 pre pre injury Nurkic, uh, no joke, dude, no joke. He was just he was on the rain. He was a. Dude, I always talk about that, how depressing it was. You know, I've talked about this on my spaces before. Um, that 2019 team, when they just picked up, you know, funny enough, Ennis Cantor, I'm not going to call him Ennis Freedom because that's ridiculous. But um, <laughs> That's his name, and, bro. Dude, <laughs> dude, like, okay, Ron, okay, Ron Artest, bro, get out of here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. 
He was in his cancer with the Blazers. How about that? <laughs> there we go. You know, I'm not I'm not slandering, but still, like it's the, um anyways. <laughs> and it, you know when they got Ennis on that 2019 team, they were legitimately looking like contenders. And there's no joke, there's no doubt about that in my mind. They, I don't know the record at the time, but I remember they blew out Boston at home. Yeah. Um, and everyone was just like, "Yo, they look super good." Like, you know, they had Seth Curry, they had Rodney Hood. Oh. Uh, they got Rodney Hood coming off the bench eventually. Eventually, um, we had Zach Collins coming off the bench. We had oh. Ennis. We had Ennis. You know, that's a hell of a nine man rotation. They're making um, me depressed. They're making dude, me I so know, depressed. I know. <laughs> I know, dude. And, and looking back, it, it, we, we so underappreciated oh, yeah. the Rangers team. Oh yeah. And those players, you know, it, it, myself included, you know, I was a really, really big cr- critic of Alfred Ricaminu, sometimes Mo Harkless. Um, but you know, just looking back, like, dude, those dudes did so much for this oh, team. Oh my gosh. And and it, it was just night and day when they left that team. And, you know, the thing that sucks about certain teams like that too, like, sorry, we're going off topic, but um, the thing that sucks about those teams too is like, you know, we just got off a Western Conference appearance, our first time in 19 years. Yeah. And we don't get to see that team redemption, like give it redemption for that warrior sweep. And we don't get to see that team, you know, fight for maybe the next year to maybe go win the finals. And, you know, you know, COVID happens, the bubble happens, the Lakers were unstoppable that next year. Um, there, there's there's obviously variables that happen, but, you know, that 2019 team definitely was very underappreciated in those players. And I want to get back to that. For sure. You know, not necessarily maybe that style of brand. Definitely uh, you know, not. Where it's just where it's just all Dame and CJ. And, yeah. We don't want uh, Stotts ball again. No. no. <laughs> we'll get into – speaking of that, man. We'll yeah, get into speaking that, of that boy. And we'll get into him in a little bit. But, um, yeah, we'll just go, we'll kind of go back. I think the preseason reactions for me is it, it was hard to re- react to this preseason at all. Um, we barely played our starters together. Yeah. Um, I think the, the biggest game we did was that was, – was against Phoenix. And, obviously, we don't have Rob Will, mm-hmm. who, who I – think it's going to be the biggest uh, X factor, on, I should say, on this team. Um, I think he can really make this team go from here to here, depending on his health. Um, I think he, I think the, I think if he stays healthy, this, this Blazers team could be really dangerous. And um, I wish I could have saw him in preseason. Um, not, not necessarily dangerous in, as like, being contenders, but I think they could, really surprise some people and yeah, that's um, what he does for us that's what's going to surprise people i think i mean he's a yeah. he's, he's a defensive player of the year candidate when one fully health yeah so i agree and the Port- portland hasn't had that especially from the defensive side you know nurkic maybe could apply pre injury nurkic probably was on that trajectory a little bit maybe not full defensive player of the year but he was a all nba defender I will say that, and he his rim protection. If you look at his, it's crazy, dude. The the drop off from his rim protection from that injury it, it is insane. Um, he used to be an elite shot like a rim protector, no. uh, and not a shot blocker necessarily, but he just he he's a solid. He's a he's a brick, dude. Yeah. You know, people don't go through him easily. So, um, I, I think he was on that trajectory of being like that anchor. Uh, defensive guy and, yeah. and and Rob Will is definitely that type of dude. Now, the the problem Portland faces in that is DeAndre Ayton. Are you willing to put Rob Will at the four? Um, I I think they could put Rob Will at the four in certain in certain lineups. Um, it's it's a little yucky. Um, <laughs> it's a little sticky, but it's a but you know Rob Will's a very switchable dude. So he, he showed in the playoffs that he can switch. Um, I'd say like three through five. Yeah. Um, he can guard wings. He he's he's six nine. He's he's lost some mobility with his injuries, but I, I'm confident in Rob Will. Um, healthy what he's going to bring to this team. And uh, so that's why I say you can't really initially react to this team. You know, they're also a very new team. We, we The only returning yeah. player that's beyond two years is Anthony Simons, mm-hmm. which is crazy, dude. Like, Portland was known for their continuity uh, in the past. You know, it was like we always have these years. We've always had Dane. We always had yeah. CJ. Long-tenured had, players, man. We've long had long-tenured tenured players. players. Yeah. We had Aminu for, I think, like four years. Mm-hmm. We had Mo Harkless for four years. We had Myers Leonard since 2012. <clears throat> you know, we had all these dudes that have been on the team for years. And that was kind of our motto. Look, uh, like, honestly, it was having long-tenured players 
And, you know, we're going we're gonna to be a small market team. And I, I really kind of do want to get back to that. And I, I, I do hope, you know, not necessarily holding on to certain players for too long. You know, you could argue that they need to change CJ. But the whole important thing for me is I, I do want to get back to having some long tenure players who we want to build around. And I, and I, I hope they make those right picks. And I think Mike Schmidt could be that guy that helps them get those picks. You know, he's, yeah. hit, on some, he's hit on some dudes already. Um, I think I – think, Tumani definitely was maybe a Mike Schmidt. Oh yeah, get Tumani, <laughs> get Tumani Kamara. Yeah, yeah. I really like him, and and maybe that makes. I don't know if they felt they were getting Tumani the whole way, but maybe that makes the whole trend in Watford thing make a little more sense. Maybe I don't know if that was maybe a side of like, hey, they just kind of really want to get the full reins to Jabari and make him the the starting four full time. Not starting four, yeah. but the starting the backup four to Grant. Um, yeah, I feel like more, yeah. I feel like that had more to do with Chris Murray probably. Chris Murray too. Yeah, yeah. Jabari and Chris. Yeah. yeah, they probably just didn't want a log jam at the backup four with three guys that they're not too sure could turn into you know suitable role players. Um, I think Kamara, he's more of a three and a four, like he could play both ways. So I think having yeah. someone like that is a little bit more beneficial than any of those three guys. So no, for sure, you know, I definitely yeah. like Kamara. But yeah, like so, just going enough away from the point, I think. The preseason reactions, it's hard to react to certain things. You can react sure. to certain players, and I think that's where we're going with, with this is um, player thoughts and expectations. I mean, uh, we'll start with Scoop. What's your player? What's your thoughts on him so far, and what's your expectations for him this year? Um, I, I've not been too surprised from what I've seen from Scoop. It's kind of been what I've expected. He's going to have his struggles shooting the ball. Um, he's going to have his struggles gaining chemistry with his teammates. He's had some bad passes. He's had a few passes that have gone out of bounds because he's had a miscommunication with guys. But these are all things that you would expect with a rookie and a new team. So with that, I'm not looking too much into that. Um, I, I think he's been about what I've, I've expected. Um, for his expectations, um, in terms of what he's going about based off stats or – I say expectation of like, do you feel like he needs to be in the rookie of the year race? The thing is, like- <laughs> the thing about the rookie of the year race, I think that's going to be a two way race between Wembenyama and Chet Holmgren. Those two guys are, are going to be the front runners for me. I think Scoot will be an all rookie first team type of guy for sure, um, and that's kind of where I would expect him to be. That's yeah. my player expectation. Just all rookie first team. Give me decent efficiency. I hope he could shoot. 33 34 35 percent from three somewhere around there yeah. if no, you can do that 29 percent yeah range, please no I, please no, no please please no um, no i think that's yeah. my, my expectations for like i said the when it comes to the rookie race we'll, we'll talk about that later but i think for me it's like you know health and how much wimby and chet play is is yeah. what's going to come down for scoot too Fair um enough. i do think scoot is going to have the ball in his hands a lot so i do think it gives him a chance but yeah like i think you know you have the, the so wimby's in that type of like market right now where it's like almost like predetermined yeah um and and you know you got to give it to him you've looked at wimby in the preseason like oh my, my god like <laughs> the thing is he hasn't even played like super amazing and we're still like oh my god you know what i mean <laughs> he's just that type of player it's like you know he, he does a little shovel pass you're like oh like you know that's just he's what ridiculous comes with the, dude yeah it, it, dude he's ridiculous you know it, it hurts my soul i love skin. one it hurts my soul one ping one pong. ping pong ball <laughs> one. and all of this is different we're all happy i mean i'm happy but we have Dame Damian Lillard. Foster. We have Wen Binyama. We have Grant. I mean, we have Simons. Dude. Oh. We don't even have to trade anyone to get – oh, my God. That's such a Portland thing to happen, just one ping pong ball. <laughs> oh well, I mean, we were, one co- we were one coin side away from getting Hakeem. You know, I feel like that's – There you go. The, oh, yeah, see? There you go. You know, that's a Portland <laughs> thing. So, um, the, yeah, the scoop expectations for me is, like like I said, you know, be a rookie, a uh, first-team rookie – Make the rookie team all, uh, like the rookie all star, and not that that matters. You know, just be, be scoot, shoot a decent clip, shoot thirty three percent or more from three. I, I'd like to see he he should be a more efficient two point shooter. Yeah. Um, I, I think he could be like you know a Dame light, and not like necessary necessarily how good Dame was because Dame was a four year 
guy coming into the into the league for sure. A lot, a lot more polished, in my opinion. Well, um, Scoot did have the the, the professional the experience years. at that point, but I get what you're going with that. I, I yeah, understand what I mean, you're going he's, with that. yeah. At the end of the day, he's still 19. You know, yeah, Dame yeah. had that that jumper on his side, which is so easy to like acclimate into a team. Is like when you have that jumper, and so that's why I really do think it's important for Scoot to have an efficient year because if he has an somewhat efficient year. I do think Scoot is going to be in a really good place, and I think Portland's going to be in a really good place. I think right now it's like when it comes to Scoot, is like you he has to be almost a generational talent for Portland to you, to do what they did this summer, in my opinion. Um, not saying he needs to be a generational player right now, yeah. but he has to be that down the line. Yeah, if he yeah. if he kind of just flops down the line, that. This summer, with how bad it's already looked, is going to look even worse. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big thing with me. That's a lot. And that's the thing I've been saying since day one when it comes to Scoot is I think he's going to have a a lot of a lot of unfair expectations from the fan base, from just people because of what Portland did this summer, what they decided to do. And, And, you know, there's already expectations that come with being the third pick in the draft to being compared to, you know, Wembyana and being compared to people saying, oh, this guy would be the first pick in multiple drafts prior if Wembyana wasn't here, mm-hmm. uh, which I which I think is true. But, you know, Scoot's going to have a lot of unfair expectations. And I think for the preseason, I think people are already getting on him. I think I, I, think I kind of tweeted out something. I was like, necessarily, I don't want this, but could you see a side where you feel like, hey, Anthony and – Shaden starts at the one and two and Scoop beats the six man. Now I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Yeah, no. But <laughs> is there is there a case for that? I've been seeing people talking about it. I'm just like, you know, I don't think that's gonna happen. But... People need to pipe it down a little bit. Yeah, they people no, that's need to the pipe thing. it down. It, yeah. He's so young, man. And and like you said, the unfair expectations. I hope eventually that starts to fade a little bit as time goes on. It, it's this damn situation is super fresh on everybody's minds. So right now, obviously, they're going to be super, super high expectations. But there's other guys on this team that can kind of take that pressure off of them. I feel like Anthony Simons, you know, Shaden Sharp, DeAndre Ayton specifically is going to have a lot of eyes on him. So yeah. for me, Scoot, I think Scoot just has to block all of this out. Just block everything out. Just play your game, man. Focus on getting better. Focus on shooting better. The little stuff that you need to worry about. Because there's going to be these unfair expectations, unfortunately, because of how everything was handled this offseason. Yeah. Um, exactly. It's just super tough, man. Because he's yeah. good. I still believe him as a great player. It is crazy to me that people are already starting to jump onto maybe we should take him off the bench. It's been <laughs> three preseason, four preseason games, guys. Come on, dude. Yeah, I know. The kid's nine. The kid's nineteen. Yeah. He is. He is younger than anyone in our family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, six, but still, like, it sucks. Dude, he's yeah. I'm 21 so now, so yeah. Yeah, so that's what everybody's I'm saying. younger like, than me now. It sucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt. Like I'm 20. I'm 25. So you know, that's when people can't. I was just like around my age. I think it was like Jason Tatum and and Zion. I'm just like, how are you guys my age? Like, (laughs) it does not make sense. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. Um, (laughs) And so the whole yeah, the scoot expectations they got they got to chill down. They got to pipe down a little bit. Um, We'll we'll move on. I think the next player we'll talk about and we can kind of transition a little bit is Anthony. Um, I have big expectations for Anthony. Not necessarily. I think if he doesn't do these, I'm going to slander him. But I have big, big expectations for him, um, especially depending on how much he gets the, how much he has the ball in his hands this year, which I think he's going to have the most he's ever had in his hands. Um, for sure. The one thing I will say to sidetrack that, though, is like the biggest problem I did see in the preseason, though, was Scoot was playing way too much just off ball non-cutting I agree. type offense. And it was just like Scoot is like kind of sitting in the corner and kind of watching Anthony do everything. That can't happen. Scoot is not that type of shooter right now where he can just kind of spot up yeah. and just kill opponents. That's just not where he's at. He will get there eventually. But I think with Scoot, it, he has to be cutting off ball and he has to be making movements while, while, while Anthony has the ball in his hands. And getting to Anthony, I think he – my expectations for him, I, I think he should have all-star type numbers. I think he should be a much improved defender. Um, I tweeted out, I think, yesterday. Um, I think he's kind of got that bad defender 
uh, novel around him. I think that's kind of been taken out of my, at least in my opinion. I'm not going to call him a good defender. Um, yeah. But he was, I could think, in the 83rd percentile for. Uh, for uh, was it screen navigation or something? Uh, like? For like, it was like <laughs> ISO defense on the perimeter too. Oh, okay. Um, um, and screen navigation was in the B was in the B territory it's for pretty good wise. Yeah. It was pretty good too. So you know he he's gonna be a a, a solid. He should be a more solid defender. Uh, I think he showed a, some of that in the preseason as well. I think he had those times where he was cutting off people, not. You know, just not being that kind of younger Anthony Simons, just letting everyone kind of blow by him and just kind of muscle him up. Yeah. Um, he's definitely got bigger, and that's on his side as well. But I think Anthony should have an all-star type year. I don't think he necessarily makes an all-star team unless Portland's just in this surprise standing where they're like, yeah. you know, like top five seed at the all-star break. Yeah. I don't – so that's – a. yeah. <laughs> but my expectations of Anthony, I think they're huge. Um, I think he is really – set to have an all-star type of year and I, i'm really really looking forward to see anthony yeah. um i'm a really big fan of him i mean he's been he's in my fantasy league um <laughs> he's a he's my he's a bro uh he he talks and smack in our group chat so he's a good guy oh, yeah, um, i love that yeah no but um what's your expectations of Ant? i i would assume it's something more yeah it's same. pretty similar i think he's going to take that step up he's going to show us that he can be that number one guy i think this year and I, the one reason i don't think he'll be an all-star this year I think he'll be an all-star caliber player, like you were saying. I just the West is so stacked this year, man. Um, the odds are just going to be against him with that, especially in the guard department. So, yeah. in that in that sense, I, I'm kind of not expecting anything there. But I do think he takes a major step up. He shows us that he's he can be that guy on a team and be a, a borderline all-star caliber player. Um, For sure. And I do um, – wait, I'll say one more thing. I do yeah. think he also gets better defensively this year, and the main reason for that being is because we have better defenders around this team, finally. Now, we have to have them stay healthy. Robert Williams, specifically, needs to stay healthy. Um, but if we have Matisse Thibel there, we have Robert Williams. I think Brogdon's a pretty good defender when he's healthy. DeAndre Ayton can be a solid defender. Jeremy Grant, if he's not tasked with – guarding faster guards on the perimeter he can be a solid help defender and kind of play in his role so i think with all that all those corresponding factors i think ant will take that step up this year defensively I yeah so and to have a rim protector yeah. like like uh williams back there is just going to be huge for sure man and, and and you know and i really do think grant needs to get i i i I'm like praying Chauncey doesn't put Grant on guards this year. I'm <laughs> praying. I am praying. Please, See, Chauncey, please. This is such a make or break year for Chauncey Billups because of things like that. Things like that. If he's continuously doing the same stuff that's not working, especially with different personnel, now that we have guys that can do what Jeremy was tasked with doing last year, there's no reason why we should be seeing that. <laughs> no, There's no, no just, reason. No. Just put, just honestly, my, in my opinion, just, just put Matisse and Grant in the lane, passing lanes, have eight and slash Williams be that rip protector and then, and put Scoot and Ant on, on guards, you know, yeah. you know, like this thing is like Dame was a solid, a, a well sound defender when he came to this league, you know, the, the league was different. It wasn't so much, it wasn't as fast paced and, you know, teams weren't scoring 115 clips every night, mm -hmm. but you know, Dan was a well sound defender when he first came to the league. And Scoot should be a – he shouldn't – you know, like I've, I had someone talking to me saying that they – that it, it was kind of silly to say Scoot should be a, a better defender than Dame is as of right now. You know, like they're, they're – uh, that's essentially saying, you know – It's not I love silly. Dame. It's not that, silly. You know, you know, I love Dame, but if Scoot is a bottom five defender this year, ugh, Portland's in trouble. And yeah. that's the thing is like I'm not expecting Scoot to be some elite – defender mm -hmm. but he has to be at least well sound enough to to guard guards on the perimeter and we had just we just have to put anthony and him on guards and that, that's just how it's going to be with our defense i think if yeah. you have grant matisse and you know tumani uh rob will and deandre as the back line i think you're in a really good spot yeah. and i think i think chauncey has the opportunity to be a surprise on these teams with like defensively mm -hmm. and I am looking forward to, like you said, it is a make or break for Chauncey in that sense. He has another yeah. four years on his contract. Um, I think he's well settled into that job to where he's kind of just 
went with everything this organization's kind of decided to do. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know what – if Portland's bad, you can always be like, you know, what's the roster? You know, it, you know. so the whole thing with Chauncey's tough. It's, I think this is probably the last year that's acceptable. Um, yeah. The roster excuse – not excuse, but the roster, just saying it's the roster or – he doesn't have a good enough roster. He hasn't been in good situations. We talked about this before our last uh, podcast cut out, unfortunately. But we were talking about this. Like, he hasn't been in good situations. He, his first year in the league, we all know what happened. Dame had to – got injury, got surgery. Exactly, yeah. So, so. And then the I mean, next yeah. year – I mean, you could say last year he had a good enough team to maybe make a playoff run, but – how are you going to do that when you're not even going to get that support from your front office to continue to better that team? They wanted to tank, man. <laughs> where's, the, where's the depth on the team, too? You know, that, like our bench our bench last year was Drew Eubanks, Rookie Shane. Oh, Shorter, yeah. Our team, was, our team was not great. No yeah, doubt about Wizzo it. And Keon, you know, it's yeah. like and, – and, like, yeah, like you said, like we had our podcast cut out and I was saying, but, like, you know, Chauncey's got dealt really bad cards. Yes. And and he just has not – and it's it's an unfair to judge Chauncey fully because of that. I oh, think yeah. he has – I think he's going to be in that position where he it, – it, it is, like you said, maybe the last year to kind of drop that roster excuse. But, yeah, you know, you know it, it's tough with Chauncey. It's like – First year, Dane plays twenty six games. He doesn't play the year. Rest of the year, I, I it was absolutely clownish of people to kind of you know kind of say like I had some people tell me that like Terry Stotts would have done better. Twenty if Terry if Terry Stotts would have got twenty six games with Damian Lillard in a year, we are finishing <laughs> dude no, two two come on like come on guys I I I can respect some of the Terry takes like you know Terry was a really really good coach when he first got here. And you know he was the league really adapted good. too quickly for him. Man. No, that's what I'm saying. His yeah. yeah, he just didn't want to adapt to certain things the league was going, yeah. and and you know and I think we'll transition now that I, we're kind of talking about Terry Stotts. Um, it came out today that Terry Stotts ended up leaving the Milwaukee Bucks, um, and it was just you know it's kind of it's it's a random you know you look at that it's like it's what like six days away from season starting. I think it yeah, starts next week. Super unexpected. Um, and super unexpected. You, you know, the initial report was just he left and um, he he's not returning. And I, and, and people were, were, were you know, were wondering why. Like, what what's going on? Um, Shams came out today and said that Terry Stotts and uh, their head coach Griffin got into a kind of a little butt, uh, butt heads together. And apparently it, the whole thing kind of went down was – uh, Adrian was having like a coaches circle apparently, and um, he wanted all the coaches to be there. Terry decided he's going to go talk to Damian Lillard and Giannis, and Adrian apparently was like, "Yo, Terry, come over here." And then Terry was like, "I'm going to talk to the players." And apparently, Adrian yelled, maybe embarrassed him in front of the team, yelled, "Get over here!" And um, uh, that kind of maybe started things. Mm. Um, I think you could speculate, though. You know, like w- another, and then Shams kind of said another perspective was that Terry was struggling with the aspect of being an assistant coach after being a long tenured head coach. And, Which is fair enough. Which is fair. You no, know, see, you know, you know, the thing is, like, you know, I, I, I think for I see from both sides there. Yeah. At the end of the day, he is a very long tenured head coach. Um, but then at that, at that, also at the other end of the day is like, you know, he was an assistant coach that won a championship. You know, you've been out of the league for a couple of years. Like, what do you like? I, I get you're expecting some respect. I don't know how the magnitude of what Adrian Griffin did to Terry. Um, but I do think it was more of like Terry just feeling, you know, like kind of bossed up on a rook by a rookie coach. And it's like, yeah. you know. It's a weird um, dynamic. If you're a long is, it, tenure coach like that, and you gotta take orders from a rookie coach, you feel like you should have that authority over him. Obviously, no, no doubt, no um, doubt. Um, I don't really know too much about the situation. I just saw the report. It, it's just a weird time, man. And I saw Dame and like Chris Middleton coming out about it, talking about it. And at least it seems like Terry Stotts was super respectful about how he went about stepping down. 
Um, yeah. So at least he, he took that well. It's unfortunate for him. Um, I don't know yeah, where his next step is. Dame. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't see him getting a head coaching. Game. Yeah, no. Um, I, and and Dame said something about it, like he, he Terry did really help him when he first got there because you know yeah. how uncomfortable that was for Dame. Yeah, you got um, to see so a familiar he, face every day. Yeah, he's so. someone who he's he was he's known for ten years. Yeah. Um. So you know, I think that was a good side for Dame. I think he said himself, like Dame said, like, oh, I'm I, I'm settled in now. Yeah, um, he's okay. So gonna it's not, it's he's gonna be fine. You know? <laughs> so if you're a Milwaukee fan, you listen to this, I, you'll be fine. Um, Terry would, I say he would be a good assistant coach, but you got your season's not over because of Terry Stotts. <laughs> no, not no, the slightest. No, and I think he, he'll leave his touches on that team too. You know, it's not like you know he's just gonna step down and be like, yo, you guys can't run any of my schemes. I mean, Dame knows. There's only what is it like four schemes to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dame knows all of them. We'll be all right. They'll be all right. Yeah. No, they'll be fine. Um, but uh, I think we'll move into this a little bit, and we kind of we can just kind of go on. We're gonna just complain on a short one. Um, we, me, and Chase have been going through a lot to get here. I wish you guys knew the magnitude of that, but so much to get here. It's almost taking two weeks to do this. I'm just <laughs> glad. I am just glad to talk to this dude right now because it, it's been it's incredible. been ridiculous. It's been it's, ridiculous. It's, so. Um, we'll go into starting line of predictions. Um, I think yeah. for me, uh, like we talked about this on the podcast, we got cut out. So you guys can already know we already recorded like 20 minutes worth. And it was just funny. We're, regardless. Yeah. Um, I think the starting lineup predictions for me, it, it's going to be Scoot, Ant, Matisse, Grant, and Aiden. Um, yeah. I think that's just the route Chauncey's going to go. Um, Chase was talking about earlier, but like, you know, I think Matisse is that safety net for Chauncey where it's like, you know, I think I could take a risk on starting guys like Tumani, Kamara, um, or Shaden at the three and starting Ant, Scoot, and Shaden together, which is a risk. But, you know, there could be some upside to that. Yeah. But I think the safety net is Matisse. Um, I think if you – I think he's not going to – he's not going to need the ball. Um, he's going to play off the ball. He's going to do the dirty work. He's going to be the, that defender for that group. And I think Matisse is in a good spot uh, to be that starter. But what I want personally, I, I would like to see Scoot, Ant, Kamara, and Grant and Aiden because yeah. I really, I really am high on Kamara. And oh, yeah. and I said this, and I've said this before. I, I think Kamara is going to be that underlier in that Dame trade where it's like, yo, like if we look back to like five, if we look forward in five years and and be like, wow, like Kamara was really a steal in that. Um, I mean, he's a he's an NBA dude. He's got an NBA size to him. Um, I think when he was guarding Devin Booker in that preseason game, I don't know if you remember, yep. uh, Devin Booker gave him that really hard shoulder into the chest, and, mm-hmm. and Jamani just took it and just he handled that just, so well. <laughs> just and and Devin's a strong dude. Oh, yeah. Like, um, so he just took that to the chest and just kind of continued. And it's like you know, you when you see things like that, and you're like, okay, like dude, this dude's not a rookie. Yeah. Um, Shout out to yeah. Eric Brandt and Tory Jones, by the way, for discovering this guy before anybody that I know. <laughs> they were talking about uh, this guy during the draft process, man. And I was like, who is this guy? But, <laughs> man, ever since I started watching him in the summer league, I've, I've fallen in love. And my dad, who's a very casual Blazer fan at this point in his life, he's been through so much trauma that he's reverted to being casual now. <laughs> he, he even is texting me about Kamara and he, he's watching, I don't know, one or two preseason games, you know? So this it, it's a big, big pickup for us, I think. And, and not many people, if you're not a Blazers fan, are even thinking about this guy. Um, and we're already talking about him potentially being a starter or wanting him to be a starter. You and know what I mean? The season hasn't even started, so yeah. that's just crazy. Maybe um, we're just in a honeymoon phase, but this guy, I don't know. I'm in love with him. I yeah, can't lie. no, I, I think I think I think he's in a really good spot. I think Tumani is going to find himself some real role minutes this year. Yeah, and and I think Chauncey really likes him. I think Chauncey kind of said in his and in his interviews, like post practice interviews, yada yada. I think he kind of just kind of implicated that Tumani is going to be in that running for that three. Um, and I think that I think that three is going to be by committee. I think it's going to be Matisse there. I think Shaden is going to get their minutes there too. I think Tumani will get there. I think Chris will even get some minutes at the three. Um, so you know, I think it's going to be by committee. I think Matisse is a safety net for that that starting position. Yeah. Um, I, in the worst case, um, you know, Matisse goes out there. He doesn't play well. He starts shooting bad. He you know, he starts committing dumb fouls. 
and Chauncey just kind of wants to shake things up and put Shimani in there. And, you know, and I think Portland would be in a really good spot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't think there's a drop off there too much. You know, I think Matisse's defense is on a different level of Chimani's right now. But, you know, Chimani's in a re- he's going to be a really, really good role player in this. Game. I agree. Man. I don't think he's going to be a star, but maybe he, I would hope so. You know, I would, as a fan, oh, yeah, you know. Of but, you know, I think he's going to be a really good spot. Um, yeah. well, I think we'll transition into, you know, just kind of record predictions. And then we can talk about the West and we can kind of just wrap the thing up. It's been a good talk. And, yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. Been just good to I, be here. <laughs> I agree with your starting lineup, by the way. I, that's <laughs> okay. the exact starting lineup I would have. Um, I think your combination, you mentioned the, the combination at the three spot between Matisse and Sharp and Kamara. I think that's pretty similar to what we're going to see. So, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's too many ways to go with the starting lineup, so yeah, we can lock that in as our prediction. Yeah, you there. know, and at the, at the end of the day, if Portland's gonna suck, like why? Like who cares? You know, at the end of the day, like if we're gonna be some really hard tanking team, which yeah. I I hope that I hope they're not. I, I do hope like they play well, and maybe Cronin uses some of their assets that they have to go get a piece at the deadline. I don't know. Um, who knows what they do? I really don't yeah. know what. My only. I, I, sorry, my bad. Go, go ahead. I was gonna say my only concern with trading away any draft capital or things like that at this point is I think that might be a little bit jumping the gun. You're jumping yeah, the gun a little bit yeah. there. Yeah, yeah you, you, we might see some flashes early on. You might get excited. Maybe we're a little bit better than we think and we actually have a chance to make the playoffs or the play-in. I just don't want us to make an overreaction to that because it's, you know, at that point, it's only going to be halfway through the season. I don't want to trade any draft capital. I just <laughs> I yeah, want to keep so it, think, keep building. I don't care if yeah. we have to do the thunder route. Like just keep building on yeah. your draft picks. That, it that's, works. That's not necessarily yeah. That's not necessarily what I would want. But, yeah. you know, I think Cronin is kind of in a place where he's out to prove himself a little bit, and um, yeah. I think he <laughs> should be. I think he should be. Yeah. Um. So maybe he feels like he needs to do something like that. I don't know. Who knows? But we'll move into record predictions, and we kind of kind of just wrap this thing up. Um, I think the record prediction for me is is thirty five and forty seven. I think that has. I think that's maybe on the top end your side for Portland. Um, and, and and for me, I think that depends on Robert Williams and his health. If he's a health, if he's healthy and he can get, you can get, I'd say sixty games out of Rob this year, which is a high task. I mean, he hasn't done that for a while. Yeah. If you can get if you can get sixty ish games out of Rob this year. I think Portland's in a really good spot to maybe sneak into the play-in. Um, now, I'm not going to necessarily predict that if Rob has just like – you know, it depends how bad Portland wants this too. Um, is, is Portland going to – like I said, is Corona going to try to maybe prove himself and go out and get a piece? I don't know. Who who knows? Um, I think they're in a in a weird spot, but I think it's – I think they're in the spot where if Robert Williams is healthy, I think they could go 35 and 47. And I think that'd be on the top end side. What about you? Um, I I can see where you're coming from. That is on the top end side for me. I would say more around 32, 33 wins. Um, I don't think we take much of a step up this year because I do think we'll be slightly better defensively. I think we have a better roster to play defense. We have more players that can actually play defense, obviously. But for me, I think the offense is going to take a slight step back. And with that, I think it'll kind of balance out to being a pretty similar record to what we saw last year. Yeah. And and with that, we're probably going to be a, a 13, 14 seed, 15 seed, which is fine with me. It's fine with me. I, I think getting another top draft pick next year, is just going to benefit us. I know it's going to suck, but I think we'll be able to enjoy this season. We're going to see a lot of things that we can look forward to. We're yeah. going to see the development of Scoot. We're going to hopefully see Sharp, Sharp take a step up. We're going to hopefully see Aiton come out of his shell. So we have a lot of things to look forward to. To me, I don't. I really do not care what happens with this team in terms of winning or losing. I think it's awesome if we can be a play-in team and we could sneak into the playoffs. Of course, that's awesome, especially with how young we are. But if we're bad, we're the worst team in the league, that also is good for us in the future. So either sure. way, I don't really care, but I would say 32, 33 wins. That's where yeah. I would probably go. I, yeah. I would never say you're wrong there. You know, Like, like I said, my record is depending on Rob Rule's health and how much Portland – and Chauncey wants that type of record. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think Portland oh. is – and like I said, I think they just have to want it. And I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, I just don't care either, you know. Yeah. Um, this, 
it's just you know it, the, this whole summer is taking so much out of me i just don't care i want to see development i want to see these dudes fall out yeah. i think they have a better roster than they did last year outside of dame obviously if dame was on this current roster i would be saying some kind of nasty thing you know you know i would be if dame was on this roster right now excluding skew i would be saying some things with this team Man, um, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about this roster with dame Dude, oh my it God. sucks it, that we get this roster. Of course, the only reason we have this roster is because of trading day. But yeah, no disrespect to Scoot, right? It's just the thought, it's just man. Like, yeah, it's just yeah. the thought, and I, I'm not gonna dwell on this show very much because, I'm, for the most part, Blazer Nation has moved on. Rip City yeah, has no. moved on. Dude, and, Twitter has been filled with that for months. Yes, and we've had enough of it, and it's time to move on. Yeah, but man, it is so time to move on. <laughs> um, honestly. We could probably just yeah. But I think let's do one more thing. Let's do one more thing for the show. I yeah. don't know if you're cool with this. Who? What would you say you're looking forward to seeing the most this season? If there was one thing you could highlight, one thing you could put your pen on, what are you looking oh, forward to seeing the a, most this that's season? A good, that's a good end topic. I think the thing I'm most looking forward to this season is, like I said, how much Portland wants it. You know, I, I think Portland, ha if they're going to really try for this thing and they feel like, hey, we have a certain team, um, I think that's the thing I'm most looking forward to. I, I'm not going to be disappointed if they don't want it. I'm not going to be disappointed if they tank it out and we're going to go for a top three seed. Yeah. There's so many directions Portland can go. Um, I'm, just ex I'm, just, I'm just here for the ride. I, I'm really, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm in this mindset where, like, you know, the Dame kind of thing yeah. kind of ripped, ripped a lot of things out of my heart for this Portland yeah. fandom. You're like Kelgen Blevins. You're like Kelgen yeah. Blevins. You're just along <laughs> for the ride. <laughs> exactly. You know? Mario Hizonia type thing. Yeah. You know, you know uh, anyway, it, yeah, so I'm just looking forward <laughs> to what this team is going to do. Um, I think you, that's just what you have to do with how things have went. Um, what about you? Yeah, for me, I think it's a little bit more specific. I think I'm looking forward to most seeing DeAndre Ayton, seeing how he turns out in this situation. Because to me, I, I can understand why he didn't – actually, it's hard to say that. I just know that he didn't really get much better from his rookie year until now. I don't know if that's the team or if that's him. And that's where we're going to find out with this Blazers roster, because if you, yeah. the, the more you go into your career, you're not going to get these chances anymore, man. Like DeAndre Ayton has a massive opportunity right now. And I'm most excited to see if he could take advantage of that and turn himself into that elite center that he is. And he's a really good center right now. If he, if he can be an all-star man, that's, yes. that, that was the thing too. It's like, yeah. if, if he could give an all-star, I mean, that'd be the first all-star center in Portland's had. Obviously if you want to count Lamarcus as a center or not. No, but, no he was not. A no. Center, so, so he was a power forward. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. so that's been the first center since Sabonis. So I was, um, I was dead. So I think so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Um, so, I was yeah, dead. no. Uh, so, yeah, no. So, like, in my lifetime, I've never seen an all-star center be on Portland. Yeah. Um, you know, great Odin had the opportunity, but, you know, well, that's a different story for a different day. But, um, but yeah, no. Um, it's, been, it's been good talking to you. I think we'll end it here. Uh, we just – me and Chase just really wanted to get something out here for you guys. Uh, we'll have a lot more of a cleaner – yeah, we'll be way more well, planned. <laughs> we'll planned say that. next time. But yes. we just had to get something out there. Seriously, the Blazers. Man. And we'll, we just get that out there. Uh, go ahead and follow me at 503 for the fans, uh, Blazers, and on Twitter. And you guys can follow Chase. I don't know your exact handle. It's right there. You know it. It's Chase oh, it's, oh. McRaw. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and get this boy followed. Good dude right here. We're definitely be posting, I think, like once or twice a week. Yeah. Um, expect, I, I think, expect like Tuesdays and Fridays for release dates. I think it's Tuesdays um, for us. I think it's Tuesdays, Tuesdays for us every okay. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, so so once a week, and we're going to be getting a lot of content out there. I'm I'm hyped to be back. It's been like I, it's been like I said, I think three years since I started podcasting, um, uh, since I podcasted. And it's been good to get back. And Chase is a good guy. Oh, yeah, I'm man. really looking forward to connecting with him more. And, yeah, I'm a, it's been a good run, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. Peace out.